This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 833, Share Gratitude to Strengthen Your Relationships, by Carl Stabe of BringGratitude.com. Hello, everybody. Happy Hump Day. Welcome to ORD. I'm your host, Greg Audino. Happy to have you here for another episode where we seek to help you improve your relationships by narrating some of the best relationship-based content out there. And everyone, it's no secret that 2020 has been a lot. (laughs) And I think you'd agree that we could all benefit from less stress and more sleep in our lives. It is so important to take care of ourselves and invest in our well-being during times of anxiety. I don't need to tell you that. That's why we are excited to partner with Calm, the app designed to help you ease stress and sleep better. Calm, which has over 85 million users, has a whole library of programs designed for healthy sleep, like soundscapes, guided meditations, and over 100 sleep stories. I myself am a Calm user, and I can safely say that its assortment of soothing material for day and night made my meditation experience a lot better, and took away the stress that we often feel about meditating the right way, whatever that means. Now, uh, for listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash ORD. That is 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library, and new content is added every week. Get started today at calm.com slash ORD. That's calm.com slash ORD. We've got an important post for you today about something simple yet effective, and that is sharing gratitude. We often think about gratitude practices for good self-work, but today we'll see how it benefits relationships as well. Let's jump on into Carl Stabe's post and start optimizing your life. Share Gratitude to Strengthen Your Relationships by Carl Stabe of BringGratitude.com Thank you for sticking with the project, my client's partner said to me. There were a dozen reasons for me to give it up. I stuck with it because my client's partner reached out to me to thank me. You are our fourth web designer that we work with. You are the only one that has made it this far. It made my day. He saw how hard I had been working to keep this project moving forward, and he wanted me to know how much he appreciated it. It was a very difficult project, because my client, the CFO in the company, lacked a clear direction. He would see something shiny in someone else's website and want it for his website. I had to be open about my frustrations and make sure we locked down version 1 before we moved on. I explained that we could do version 2 eventually, but we needed to get version 1 launched and learn from it before we started on the next version. After that conversation, we both clearly understood what was expected of each other. I probably would have left the project if it wasn't for his partner. His compliment kept me focused on setting proper expectations. That was my biggest takeaway from the whole situation. A 15-minute conversation had the power to change how I work with people. It helped me pause and appreciate the project for what it was and not what I wanted it to be. He knew he couldn't get another designer to help his company with the site. He needed me to work out so he could finally get the site launched. I decided to write down why I was grateful for the difficult client. I was grateful for him because he paid well and my family needed the money. I was grateful for the conversation with his partner that showed me the power of showing heartfelt appreciation. This would never have happened if I didn't stick with the project. I was grateful for him because it showed me that I needed to be more clear with my expectations of the project. Next time you're struggling in a relationship at home or work, try writing down three things you are grateful for about that person. Share Gratitude Journal Start with keeping a journal about people you enjoy. Then, extend it to people you struggle with. Writing down your gratitude for someone difficult will help you relax and appreciate them for who they are and not what you want them to be. This practice will expand your ability to understand other people's emotions and appreciate them. You will also allow yourself to expand your perspective of them. They can't hurt you if you are able to appreciate them. Appreciation encourages empathy. If you can empathize with someone, then they stop just being a bully or a weirdo. They become someone that you want to understand better, and your curiosity takes over. The next step is sharing gratitude with people. I started by sending my mom a quick email, thanking her for all her support. She's been there for me throughout my life, and she's always willing to listen. I then sent my wife a text telling her that I love her. 
I thanked someone in a private Facebook group that I'm a part of. I got energized. As I've gotten better at sharing gratitude, I noticed a few key elements. Three pillars of sharing gratitude. One, sincere. Do they believe that you mean it? Two, appropriate. Are you fully aware of the situation and the person you're talking with? How do you let them know that you appreciate them? Three, specific. Do they understand what they did well and why it mattered to you? If you can nail these three pillars, then you can make someone's weak and build stronger relationships. These strengthened relationships will have the greatest impact on your career and home life. Dr. David Destineau, professor at Northeastern University, showed that when a team member feels proud of their work, they will work 30% longer on a project. When we are able to build relationships through honest encouragement, we help others build confidence. This confidence will help us get the best out of our teams. Well-delivered gratitude. Our default action is to give thanks to someone soon after they help us. This is good, but there's a second part. We need to thank someone after we've seen how their help impacted us. For example, when someone gives you advice on your resume and you implement that change, of course thank them for their help. But when you get that next job you wanted, this is a perfect time to deepen the relationship by explaining how it helped you land your new job. It shows them that you truly cared about their help, and it reinforces that they are a brilliant friend. Our inner bullies can overwhelm us at different times. This includes our friends. This is when your message of thanks a few weeks later could help reinforce their positive view of themselves. We could all use this from time to time. I had an old boss that knew when to give me gratitude. He could see when I was down or could use a boost. When you share gratitude at work, you show people how they are playing a unique role in your life. This is important for managers. If you explain why they are being helpful, then you help your employees see that their efforts are contributing to a larger purpose. Start small. When you start a sharing gratitude journal, remember this journal is just for you. It's to help you build your sharing gratitude muscle to make it easier when you are ready to reach out to others. It makes it easier to remember what you are grateful for, and it helps you be more specific when you are ready to share gratitude with others. When you're ready to start, try a direct message, just one or two sentences each week to a friend, co-worker, or family member. Watch the reaction. Most of the time, you'll get a very appreciative response. Remember to focus on just being honest and with no strings attached. They'll see that you are just showing appreciation, and it will help you build a stronger relationship with them. You'll make them feel great, and you'll also give yourself a boost of dopamine as well. It's a win-win for both of you. The hard part is remembering to send out your appreciation on a regular basis. So try to make a daily or weekly routine around this practice. Thursdays are my share in gratitude day. I usually send out my gratitude to people on a certain day because I like doing this all at once. It's my day for sharing gratitude with the people that matter to me in my life. I set a calendar reminder to email, message, or call three to five people every week. I'll start by writing down five people and a quick idea of what I want to say to them. Once I have the five people and a short note written down, then it's just typing the message in a text message, on social media, in an email, and sending it. It's just getting the momentum going then you almost can't help but send it. You've done all the hard work, and you want them to hear how awesome they are. If they don't reply back, don't get discouraged. The idea is to give without any need for reciprocation. This helps you build your giving muscle. It's one of the most important aspects of a healthy and purposeful life. You just listened to the post titled, Share Gratitude to Strengthen Your Relationships, by Carl Stabe of bringgratitude.com. All right, question for all of you. Do you ever need to maybe trick yourself into doing what's good for you? Uh, my gut says you do, maybe just once in a while, because I know I do. Well, the good news for all of us is that there is now a podcast on the market that can help us to do just that, and it is called Inner Monkey, and it's all about helping all of us control our own inner monkeys. Inner Monkey is all about managing those day-to-day -day struggles, those annoyances we face that keep us from being motivated when we want to be and tempt us to act on irrational fears and everything in between. With recent episodes highlighting important concepts like self-forgiveness, self-compassion, uncertainty, and our tendency to run from our problems, this show definitely helps you gain the tools you need 
to make decisions that support the life you want to live for yourself and the direction you want to go in. So, give these guys a listen. Again, the show is called Inner Monkey, and you can search for it in the podcast provider of your choosing, or you can even go there directly from here, as I've posted a link in this episode's bio. That is Inner Monkey. Go give it a listen and enjoy. It's worth your time. And thank you so much to Carl for letting us read his work today. As I said in the intro, we often don't consider the ways in which expressing gratitude helps others as much as it helps ourselves. It's easy to forget that appreciation is something we love to both give and receive. And part of uplifting others and encouraging them to do the same is to recognize their efforts outwardly. This helps us feel safe, bonded, uh, reminded that we're contributing, and feel assurance that the silent struggle we're all facing does not go unnoticed, and that is huge. We all find ourselves looking at things in a very individualistic type of way, at least from time to time, you know, focusing on what we're doing and maybe forgetting a bit of what others are doing. This can build up a lot of tension, and that tension is broken when everyone's struggle is acknowledged through this process of giving and receiving gratitude. It's simple, yet powerful. So, get out there and put this to use right now. Right now, there is virtually no downside to such a thing, and it will be sure to make yourself and others feel a bit lighter on your feet, I'll say. I'm going to sign off for today and let you guys go get to it, so thank you for showing up and listening to the end, and do be sure to come back here tomorrow as we enter the parenting leg of the week, where your optimal life awaits.